The alien tore through Shinnok's flesh, reducing him to a bloody pulp. The creature then returned to its nest in Outworld. It continued to venture forth looking for suitable hosts for use in establishing a new hive. The alien found more than a few intriguing species and dragged them back to its lair. Once a queen had been spawned, the alien's new hive multiplied quickly and spread unchecked throughout the realm. Emperor Kulkulkan attempted to save Outworld in a desperate final attack on the alien's main nesting ground. The attack failed. Outworld belonged to the aliens. Leatherface had cut down the old man in the strange outfit. Maybe now that he was dead, the pretty yellow-haired gum-chewing girl would notice Leatherface. Putting on his fanciest mask, Leatherface found the army camp where the pretty girl could be found most days. He had to cut through a few guards and more than a few of her friends to get to her, but it was worth it. He pulled out the old man's face, which he'd saved for the girl as a present. The girl didn't want the present, and she wasn't being nice. So Leatherface chopped her into tiny pieces for Drayton to use in his chili. He then took off his mask and set to work on the girl's face. If she wasn't going to be his girlfriend, she could be his in other ways. Having learned that Outworld was now protected by the Mortal Kombat Tournament, Bo Raicho returned to defend his homeworld. He was no friend of Kotal Khan, but no realm deserved subjugation. Bo Raicho began training Outworld warriors for the fight to come. With Bo Raicho's fighting skills and leadership, Outworld repelled the Earth Realm aggressors. His former friend Raiden had been denied. After destroying Shinnok, Triborg turned his attention to the Special Forces. General Blade and the others fought valiantly, but their human weaknesses led to their inevitable defeat. Now with access to the SF computer network, Triborg used it to interface with the Lin Kuei storage drives from which he was spawned. He saved the brainwave data of dozens of his Lin Kuei brothers and sisters to the SF servers. The SF laboratories provided the materials necessary for Triborg to create cybernetic bodies for each one. Soon the downloads were complete. The Cyber Lin Kuei had been reformed. But because Sub-Zero had forever sullied the clan's name, Triborg decided to begin anew. He would henceforth be known as the leader of the deadliest clan in all the realms, the Takunin.